Okay, everyone. Hi, I'm Penny Heron, and I'm in Cotton Corner, which is a sis sister company to Yoder's Department Store, which is right across the hall. And I am not wearing a mask, but I will tell you everybody in Yoder's and Cotton Corner has masks, and all of the customers are wearing masks, too. So if I wasn't six feet away from everyone, I would be wearing a mask, but it's easier to talk and see on the video without me having one. Uh, but um, I am very conscious of that, and I felt very comfortable being in here yesterday when um, everybody was following regulations and I didn't have to feel uncomfortable being around people that didn't wear a mask. So everybody's being very proper. Now in this one, uh, we're combining my favorite gifts and my favorite notions. So uh, the things I'm talking about, if you wanna see them online in order, you can look under gifts or you can look under notions and I'll have all of this stuff listed for you in one spot so that you can go ahead and um, order whatever you need. And uh, so there is also a guide that I think Shayla will put up and it's for a variation of one of the first ones I'm gonna talk about is the Tisket Tasket pattern by um, me and my sister. And this is the original. So you can see that this is wider. It has a little bit shorter handle and um, it's more of a rectangular shape. And I made this and you make it out of two fat quarters. And I absolutely love this because there's a gap in here. So we made a lot of these and um, my, my kids moved into a new house and the neighbors mowed their lawn while they were moving and helped and everything. So we made a lot of these and they put thank you cards and they could slide it right in here and then give them to their neighbors with different gifts in them. So once we started about you know, doing that is um, I do live in Ohio, you know, so we do live in um, canning country, and I had tons of um, canning jars. And so I adapted this, and Shayla will put the cutting instructions for this, but I adapted it so it was more square, so it would fit a canning jar exactly. So now for Christmas this year, we are giving these to all my grandchildren's teachers and stuff. This happens to have fireballs in, so this is my personal one. Uh, but we're filling them with whatever the teachers like. And so we're putting in Chex Mix, my granddaughter's making caramel corn, uh, you know, we're putting in different kinds of candies, et cetera. But it's really cute. And canning jars, I just saw on Amazon because I needed some rings for these, were $40 for a pack of canning jars, or for the lids, not the jars, just the lids. And so I found these, and they have these in all different colors, in white, et cetera. And um, I'm usually using my jars to freeze anyway. And so I use this because it's Christmas colors and put it on here. But these were a dollar a piece. So they had all kinds of varieties. And then see, once again, I can just tie the top. Now in the pattern, I wanted it to be, um, the tails to be a little longer so it would be easier to carry. So you can see the original are a little shorter. So it just depends on which variety you want. But this one held the jar exactly. And when I put the jar in this one, it looked like part of the gift was missing. You know, so, um, and then once again, the, my grandchildren for their teachers are writing thank you notes and that'll be the gift they get. So this is called Tisket uh, Tasket, a two fat quarter basket because that's all you need to make one of these. Um, be careful though when you're doing it because this is directional fabric so cut it and look at the way it's pieced so that if you are using directional fabric that it will not be going around you know, in a way that you don't, don't like. Oh, you're talking to her, okay. <laughs> Okay, these are, this is our spider web tool, and this is the, it's a 45 degree angle here, but it's also 11 inches long. And this was developed by Carla Alexander, who has become a close personal friend, and she lives out in Oregon where the wildfires are going on right now. Uh, but she is brilliant the way she designs things. And so with this tool, uh, this is one of the patterns she designed, and it's called Crazy Hearts. And you can see that you're just using this to cut the angle of the heart right there. And then, see, these are cut with the ruler. Right there is cut with the ruler. So they go together very quickly. And this is a great thing to make a bride for like a bridal shower or a wedding shower or something like that because, um, like my daughter was in a wedding, there were six different bridesmaids. 
And so they signed the hearts and everybody else that came to the shower signed around it and it was just a nice memento because this is a nice size, it's a big table runner, okay? Uh, you can also do these in red and black. Um, I had a friend that was getting a divorce so we did black hearts and had a party and everybody signed that too. And it was just kind of a funny way to say, okay, you've got another life coming on. And, uh, but it's a very cute pattern and very easy to do. So this is the number one selling cut loose press pattern of all time. And this is crazy Christmas trees. And it looks difficult. It's actually just taking 10 inch squares and cutting this shape out of a 10 inch square and then you cut the background out of like half of this ruler and piece these huge triangles within a square that end up measuring about 11 inches and then slice and dice them across and she tells you right on the pattern where to mark it so you can do this so it's really a stack and whack and then you reverse the colors because see here it's the point, there it's the middle, there it's there. And so you get one of each out of all of it. And you make eight uh, triangles within a square. So basically you're sewing 16 seams and then subcutting it. So the background is cut at the same time this is. So it goes together very, very quickly. And so I absolutely love this. And um, I've done it in fall colors because, you know, autumn I love fall is my favorite color or my favorite season with all the leaves changing and so i've done this with all of the same background and it's just as pretty i've done this in fall colors so it looks like fall trees and it's gorgeous uh, this happens to be um, um who did this line it's laurel birch. laurel birch thank you this is laurel birch's 10 inch squares and you need eight per table runner so i got a pack of those and it's enough to do five of these and believe me if you make one you're going to be making four more because everybody that walks in your house is going to want this yes now if you can just hold that up for a second uh, we carry this is gypsy applique freezer paper and I've taught this several times but when people went to go back to their seats they would mix up the order of these or which were the top or whatever and um, they would make mistakes so I realized if I took this oversized freezer paper these are 12 by 15 inch sheets so it's bigger than the square that you're piecing when you add the triangles to the you know the uh, center triangle because see this is bigger than the block and so I took that triangle and on the pattern she tells you to uh, make marks on the side of here so you're measuring up two and a half inches and two and a quarter on this side so they're kind of wonky cuts. I, put, I drew that triangle with the ruler right on the freezer paper and then added those lines going across it like this and this is freezer paper so it's waxing on one side. I literally ironed it to my top triangle and then when I cut those out, I had them marked that this was 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, et cetera. And so then they weren't going to mess it up because they went back. They knew exactly which order and which went on top because uh, we were talking earlier about a friend of mine, Kay, that uh, <laughs> sews with us. And we did this at a retreat one time and she turned all of them upside down. So all of her limbs were going up like this. And she said, well, a tornado hit. It works. And, uh, but that way they could keep them all in the right order. And the freezer paper just pulled off. So they sliced it right through the freezer paper and their fabric, but it was in the right order then so they could iron it back together if they wanted to make another one and just use that template forever. So um, that's what the larger size freezer paper is perfect for, something like that. Now her latest one in this series is using the same tool and I'm going to have Linda do this. Now the reason this isn't finished is she did a table runner where she took half of them on this side and half are underneath, but I wanted to use this as the balance in my kitchen. So um, my son is coming down sometime because COVID's delayed him coming down and doing all the, you know, I love you mom. You know, chores and one of them is going to be putting up a cornice board over my sliding glass doors in my dinette and so then this is um, Essex cloth and so I'm going to add a border of that and we're just going to wrap it around the, uh, the board and then I'm making another quilt with all these bright and happy colors to be a tablecloth on that table and so uh, this that's the reason this isn't finished I'm waiting to see what size it has to be it's long enough I just don't know what to add to the top and bottom 
but um, you know, it's, a, it's so cute. And on the pattern, if you look, if you just hold that up for a second, Linda, I'll show them. The cup, see, right there with the ruler, she tells you which lines to line it up, and the saucer's the same thing. So you're sewing all of these pieces together and cutting them out as one unit with this. So you're cutting out the entire cup, the entire ca or saucer, and then she has you piece this, and that is half of the ruler because this has a straight edge. So you're cutting that angle and it matches exactly and goes together beautifully. You just have to read the instructions. Mm -hmm. Now we love that so much that we ended up making these for Christmas presents. So we did individual ones. These were our teacher gifts last year. And if you notice, they have a pocket on the back. So we made this, and my daughter is a machine quilter, so she wrote the names of the teachers on all of their mugs, and uh, then we gave them Starbucks gift certificates and things like that and put it in the pocket, but it's little mug rugs for their table. And then for the men, we did um, gray ones and, and applicate an O on it for Ohio State, et cetera. So they liked it too, and then they had their name in the cups. And so um, I, I took a picture of one of these and sent it to my children and said, what do you think? Do you want me to make you any of these for gifts and stuff? And I got 45 people back. And so we, and uh, Nina and Kay came over one day and we ended up making, what, probably 80 of these because they all made them for gifts and everything. But it's, you like making something that your kids say, yeah, yeah. I like that too. And so we just did it and it was all scraps and they went together beautifully. But putting the pocket in the back, then you could put in a thank you note, a Christmas card. Um, if they're actually doing it, they could put in a tea bag or whatever they need you know, to keep at their station. But those went together really well. Uh, let's see. Oh, another one of my favorite gifts, especially now, because so many people are new to sewing because they needed to make masks. And so they got out, you know, they dragged out this old sewing machine they've had in the closet that they hasn't seen the light of day for 20 years. And I'm sure Linda's seen a lot of them because they probably brought them in for repair. And uh, so they're sewing for the first time. And there's a whole series of books that Landauer put out. And um, I happen to write one of them, so I'm a little prejudiced. This is... Um, quilting tips and tricks. So I tell you things about backings and battings and bindings and um, how to organize your stash, etc. But they have a whole series of these. And this is battings by Krista Moser. And she's coming next um, for the next festival in teaching. And she has been long arming for 20 years. And then uh, they just, this is the newest one that just came out on stabilizer by uh, Sue O'Berry. And it tells you, I don't understand stabilizers, battings, and um, interfacings, et cetera. So there's series of these. So if you're working with a beginning or have a quilting group like I do, it's great to give them these little pocket guides because it tells you by brand what it is. So for instance, on the interfacing, yeah, and here's a no math one. Here's one on needles. So it tells you all the different sewing machine needles and hand needles and what you need for each. And then this one is by Janice Vane. And it has all the different, it's a pocket guide to all the little different embroidery stitches. And these retail for $8.50, so they're just a really reasonably priced um, series, you know, to start giving someone so they can keep these, because these are small enough you can just keep right with your sewing machine. And um, I love the battings and the interfacings and the stabilizers because, for instance, if you want to buy a product like Heat and Bond, it tells you that Heat and Bond is the same as Wonder Under, is the same as Soft Infuse, and all the different companies. When you walk in, I can't compare brands and know that this is all basically used for the same thing and is the same thing. And um, especially now when so many things are out of stock and some companies are having problems you know, keeping that stuff in, these pocket guides are ideal because you can go from brand to brand and you'll know that you're doing the right thing. And, um, and they're just cute, see? So this whole stack is, there's just a ton of information in here. Very concise, all charted, so it's really easy to find what you want and um, by brand name. I hate it when I used to get a pattern and it would say, you know, get this kind of, you know, fusible whatever. And the very first thing I did, I got Heat and Bond Ultra, which you can't stitch through because I did not know there was a difference and ended up throwing a lot of stuff away because I couldn't stitch through it. And so that's where I learned my lesson. Those kind of books are invaluable. Yes, it's called Coffee Break and it's a $3.99 uh, cut loose press pattern.
Now, hers is for a table runner. We just did individual ones. So, but it tells you how to make the coffee. And so, you know, you can put those blocks together however you want. Okay. And there is not a pattern for this one, but I want to uh, talk about this. I'm um, in the process of writing this up. And these were tied in bows earlier, but of course, you know, by the time they got here, they're not. Um, but Linda, do you want to hold those up? And these are with our straight out of line ruler. And there's a story behind these. And um, if you notice, those have fish and that has bones because it's for my um, daughter-in-law and son's cats and dogs. And then these are theirs with the ornaments on them, if I can get these untangled. And I might have to put my glasses on for this or turn it over to Linda. Yeah, let's just turn it over to Linda. <laughs> That's an easier solution. Okay. And the straight out of line ruler looks like this. And uh, this has squares and it cuts them from four to 10 inches. So when I am doing this, I can cut them to any size I want. And then it's putting together a little four patch. So I used this and did four inch squares and these little blocks end up being three inches. So I did um, 32 lights and 32 darks made a set of these. Now what I love about them are these little ties. This is the names are on these. Because I have five children, and if you have had children, even, no matter how many, um, there were different people would show up at your house at Christmas, and you didn't know who was coming, and you didn't even know sometimes that there was a girlfriend in the picture until they showed up Christmas. And so I could go upstairs, I had these ready, write their name on it, and then when they broke up with them, peel that off and just put another set of tags on it without having to do the whole thing. And my daughter saw me doing that one day and was appalled that I was removing, you know, <laughs> the old guy from the new. And um, so she said, well, if you're really going to do that, you should just put them on with heat and bond and not even stitch them. And then you can just pull them off. And I thought that's brilliant. So now they only are stitched down if they get married. So they may have labels, but you can look and they're not stitched until they're married. So, um, but that's very easy because I just did um, eight by eight using the four inch, four inch squares of this and to piece those together and then just cut it into a stocking shape. So I took our stocking shape that was from the other stockings that I had, but I realized then when I went to the store, there are some stockings facing left and there are some facing right. So make sure when you're making stockings that you look at any stockings you already have if you're going to combine them because you want all the toys, their toes pointing in the same place because it looks weird if they're not. Okay. And then to do those little tabs, I did this on wool. So I cut this out and fused it and um, buttonhole stitched around it. And see then on the back, you just see the wool. So I didn't have to trim it. And then I just pinked it. And I'm sure you have pinking shears here. Um, because I have, um, actually I use nine as pinking shears when I need pinking shears because um, it's hard to find. You need a good quality pair of pinking shears. That's not something to go cheap on because it's hard to cut through that unless you have a quality, um, a quality brand. So I just pinked around there with the wool and that made it very easy to finish those. And then I put wool on the back too, okay? Now, now to get that to fuse to the wool, um, we have another product that I helped develop and it's called Print and Fuse. And Print and Fuse comes in 12, 25, and 100 sheet packs. And I made it because I was working on a Nancy Halverson pattern at the time. And uh, it had a lot of pieces. And so I was doing it for a class. And I thought, everybody in class is going to have to sit there and trace all this out before we can do anything. And this can be run through a printer. So I can trace it once, run it through the printer, and give a sheet to everybody. And then they're ready to start pressing it to the wrong side. and. Um, you know, sewing and cutting it immediately. Now with this though, when you're using it, put your like templates together. If they're gonna be the green, put the green together, the gold, the blue, et cetera, because then you can just chop off that whole chunk. And here, let's open this so they can see it. And then they can iron it to the wrong side of the fabric. Now, uh, the next thing I'm teaching in, see this, it's and the stuff, sticky stuff is on the back, but you run it through the printer and I can run off as many as I want. 
and for everybody in the class. Because the next thing we're doing is, Stacy West was here last year, and I saw some of her Christmas ornaments. She's with Buttermilk Basin, and they can get the book for you too. She just came out with a Christmas ornament book. And that Christmas ornaments, um, I've got a bunch of scraps of wool. So uh, all of the ladies that come to my house for class, we're gonna sit at the table. I'm gonna run all of these off so they're ready, and they can just put it on whichever fabric they want and start cutting out and go home with all of their things ready to buttonhole stitch and finish their ornaments. So I thought that would be a really nice way to do it on, on these sheets. So um, it's very affordable and it's so nice to trace once and everybody gets it and they don't have to do that. And the freezer paper I talked to uh, talked about, by the way, comes in eight and a half by 11 sheets too. And this um, the larger size, I can't run through my printer because my tray isn't big enough. But with this, I can. And so if I want to do freezer paper applique where I'm turning the edges, et cetera, I use this size because I can trace it onto here and run it through a printer and then put it in kits if I'm doing kits, et cetera, for my classes or um, just staple several together and cut out several layers at a time. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but you know, I think you had to be in secretarial school in the 70s to know this, but if you have a slimline stapler, there is that little silver uh, thing in the bottom you know, of it. If you push that in and turn it, it has the staples going out instead of in, so you can remove them with the fingernail. So uh, they're temporary. You didn't know that? No. Oh, Linda, and you're older than me, so you know, you're my generation. We should have known this. And uh, But somebody showed me that, and I thought, this is brilliant because it's so easy to remove them, but they're called temporary staples. And then you can just push that in and turn it the other way, and it turns the plate, and then the staples go in. So um, I do that on all of these because I can staple. I'll draw on one, put four or five sheets below it, staple them together with that, and then once I have it cut out, I can just... Pull out that staple and see. I, I can even teach Linda stuff. something. I'm so excited. Yeah. So uh, this is another, this is a newer product that has been selling like crazy. And it's called um, scrap tape. This is two and a half. I want you to feel this. This is two and a half inches wide. And it is, um, it's fusible on one side. But you don't touch, um, it's, I'm sorry, it's not fusible. It's wash away. And so um, you don't touch it with an iron or anything because it'll get wonky and you don't uh, want to spill a drink on it because it will go away. Uh, but you can do, use your scraps, see, to do long strips like this and then trim them down to size. And here's one that hasn't been trimmed yet. So see, you can just take all of your scraps and then trim them down two and a half inches, and, which is the width of this. And you can get a little more planned because look what we did with this. Isn't that cute? And so this is another thing for their, their favorite teachers. We're doing this and then we're putting the teacher names in here. And because they can hook a pen right in here. And then on the inside, yeah, now see, this is just those cheap notebooks that you can get, you know, that um, at school season time, we got a bunch of them for a dollar a piece. And, so this is a journal that you just fit in there. And we just traced around that and then did a flap on here. So it, you're making a um, book cover like we had to have when we were in school. It was required. I don't even know if it, they don't even have books anymore. So who knows? But um, so that's how we did the cover. But I love this because it's the exact size of our little six by eight inch mat. So I can put this in here and um, take it to classes when I'm paper piecing or I just need a little surface. And then this four and a half by eight and a half inch ruler fits in there perfectly. So I've got a ruler with me and I can take this whole thing. When I paper piece, a lot of people use the add a quarter and add an eighth rulers, et cetera. And uh, since ours now, all the rulers have the grip on the outside edge, if I'm in a pinch, I tend to just use that and cut a quarter of an inch away from the edge because it doesn't slide or anything. So this is everything I need um, if I'm paper piecing something. And then Kay was playing with her embroidery machine, and so she did it and embroidered right on the band. But this has that, what we did to do these is this is this tape. We sewed a gray strip, a white strip, a gray strip, a white strip, and we just 
marked our first one on here and started by doing, I think these were one and a half and these were one inch strips. And we just worked our way up and then added the sides, trimmed it even with the two and a half inch strip and it was just easy. We didn't mark every single one, we just marked our starting line and by sewing one and a half inch strips and then one inch, it created this. So if we have a teacher with more than five letters or less than five in their line, we'll just keep going. So it was very easy to do. I mean, this probably took an hour and a half. So it's a very nice quality gift, you know, to give to somebody. And for me personally, I want to do these and put um, 2020, 2021, because every year um, I'm getting too old to remember like what I even cooked for Christmas last year, let alone what everybody got for gifts. And there's, you know, now there's more grandchildren and more children. And so I want to keep a journal of each year so I know what we did for Thanksgiving, for the holidays, what we did for Christmas, what everybody got for gifts, where we went and all of that. So I know from year to year. And um, because sometimes they like what I cook and sometimes they don't. So I might as well have a source so I can just cross it off and say, yeah, that one wasn't a, that one wasn't a good seller. Now, if you want to do this, this is a little sample where she took all of her scraps, but I want to show you the back because, see, you can then combine all of those. And the nice thing about this, the first time it washed, that all dissolves. So you don't have, it doesn't even feel bulky because it's so thin, but it's going to be totally gone anyway. So that's a really nice product. And um, see, if we did one of these, which is what this is for, is another one. We wanted to do a scrappy, but look how cute it'll look just doing a band so it's a way to use up all of those little scraps left over from applique that you can't really cut into squares and strips and you get this roll is just huge so we should read and tell you how long it is shouldn't we and 25 yards so that's enough to do a lot did you have a question shayla the and i use the scrap tape to do this part um, and then we just covered a journal by tracing out the journal and adding flaps to it. But if they want a pattern, well, I can write this up as a cut loose press form. Okay? So if they want a pattern, we'll get one out to them before Christmas. Okay. Now, these are very popular. And this is, um, I, was, I was actually working um, and lecturing at the Madison Show you know, Nancy Zeman's thing. And these women came up and they said they were making these bowl cozies, but they got confused about what kind of batting to put in it and they accidentally started a fire. So, and you know, cause I always thought the bowl cozies would be nice. And she said, we thought it just had to be 100% cotton, but some of them have a glazing on it and you can't use anything that's bonded. And you know, there were all kinds of rules. And so I said, what if we put together packages of batting so you didn't have to worry about that. So this is what we came up with. You can sew five two and a half inch strips together and the batting is the right stuff. It's already cut to size and it has the V's to do this so you don't even have to think about it. So you sew together your two and a half inch strips and make it into 10 and a half inch squares so you can, or the five two and a half inch strips, so you can get four of these out of a strip set but you need one for the back and one for the inside. So you'll be able, out of five strips, you'll be able to get two bowls. So you sew all of those together like this, put on the batting, and see this isn't cut, but the batting is cut, but it tells you where to do your, your, dot, your um, pleats. So you're doing all four of those, put one inside of the other, right sides together, so the rim leaving a gap for turning and here you go. So you can make these in a half an hour and uh, they're just great, you know, gifts, especially like my grandchildren. So they're not getting stuff out of the microwave and burning their hands. And so these work really nicely. And you can just get a candy bowl or putting it in there and fill it with candy or something, you know, so it's just a nice little add on gift. Um, but some people love this and this has eight pieces in it. So I, I think it's eight. So it's here, let's, it's time to put on the glasses and read. Um, yeah, this package contains batting to make four bowls. So there's eight pieces in here. And, um, but some people had their own batting and they knew what kind to buy. And so we also did a plastic template. So you can take this, put it on your padding and draw 
you know, the dip, the uh, pleats right in the side. So you don't have to take the time to mark it and measure and all of that. So it goes even faster if you have the right tools. And this is the kind of thing, once again, that you could um, make multiples of. Because I tend to make 30 and 40 because we're making teacher gifts and, and you know, um, the gymnastics teachers and all of those people, piano teachers, you know, it goes on and on and on. But to me, I feel like it takes a village to make a, um, to make a child. And so I want to support all those people that have um, had a positive in influence on my kid's life and my grandchildren's life. Uh, this is another one of my favorite notions and it's a great gift. These are magnifiers, and, but they're sticky on one side. So if I'm using a ruler, for instance, and I need to mark it, like right here is where I need to line this up, this will stick right there, and then you can see how it magnifies. Can you see that on camera, Brian? But see, it magnifies right at that point. So that's not only marking which line I have to use, to trim this, it's also showing me exactly, close up and personal, exactly where I need to place that to get a perfect cut. And they come in two sizes, a big one and a little. And then the newest size that just hit the warehouse this week is you can buy them individually. So uh, this is the size I tend to use more because I really want it for that little close up stuff. But I use it on the Creative Grids rulers all the time because um, it's just a nice, little add-on to be able to see that. Plus, I don't have to pay attention of um, where I'm placing my ruler every time because I know because this is in the right place. OK. And let's see what else we've got here. This is not completed. And because I wanted to show you, this is a new market apron. And you can see by the shape. But I love the way she added this rounded piece at the top and at the bottom to give it interest. And I made this out of um, Essex cloth, which is a combination of linen and cotton. And it's a little thicker than regular fabric. It's more like kitchen towels in, those, you know, in the old days. Um, but I love the big pocket. I love that it hides all of this. And, um, and I wouldn't even have to wear a bra some if I had this on. So if you go to, you know, if you go to answer the door, throw on the apron and go for it. Yeah, because yesterday um, was the first day that I had worn a bra since I think March 28th, except for like a sports bra. And I wore it up here and I thought that's not happening anymore. <laughs> that's, just, that's over. So um, I don't know what that industry is going to be like past COVID, but I think it's going to be shrinking dramatically. I think we've all yeah, got our freedom. So. Um, this is the one side with the big pockets, and then Linda's going to hold up um, the other. Now, in the original pattern, she has you turn all of these. You know, you turn down and turn it down again and do the armholes. I wanted to add a little bit more weight to it, so I did it so it's reversible. So this is the inside, and see, all I'm going to do is put these right sides together and sew around and just leave a thing for turning, and it'll be totally reversible. And then the straps are already made, but you sew one in here and then one in the opposite corner. And so um, you don't have to tie them. You're just putting your arms through and doing it. And these are adjustable. So I haven't sewn this yet because this is going to be for my daughter-in-law. And I don't know what size the straps have to be. So I can't finish this as a gift. But um, her family, they all get together to make cookies every year. And so I thought it would be so cute to make this for my grandchildren and my, and, uh, my daughter-in-law so they would all have these. And this actually is, it looks like it has holly and stuff on it. So it's kind of a sophisticated Christmas print. And, but it's not Christmassy enough that they wouldn't be able to wear it year round. Yeah. And that's Facebook one. Cheryl Parsons. Oh, Cheryl Parsons just won for being a Facebook. So what did she win, Shayla? A $75 gift card. So. Yeah, that is awesome. But see, these, and this really took longer to press and put the pocket on than it did to sew it. So, so this is probably a two-hour project. 
But I use these, oh, and there's a pin in this, Linda, so <laughs> just like home. Uh, but when you're doing that, I use these fabrics because it kind of reads as Christmas if you're up close because you can kind of see the holly in the, um, but if they were using that year round, nobody would pay any attention to it. So they could use it um, year round and it wouldn't necessarily read Christmas. And actually it's big enough that I think it would, my son likes to barbecue and all that stuff and I think it would work for him. I don't think he'd like the curves and the, you know, the thing to make it cute, but, um, it would, be, it would be masculine enough. Another ruler that Creative Grids just came out with, which I absolutely love, is the Kitty Corner. And it was designed by uh, Deb Heatherly, who lives in um, Tennessee. And if you look at this, Brian, can you see how little these are? If I pull this off, see, this same ruler will make these Kitty Cornered block from this size all the way up to this size and all of these sizes in between. So they're just absolutely gorgeous. And these are a few of Deb's, and this is called um, Daddy's Ties. And this is a cut loose press pattern, so it's one of the $3.99. And I had a close friend that lost her husband in his 50s and um, never smoked a day in his life and um, got lung cancer. And so on this, we're going to take his ties and do this, which is, here's the block right here that was made with the tool. This is just a half square triangle with sashings on each side. So that's how this is made. But we're going to do this with his ties and do his Oxford cloth shirts in the blue. You know, this is going to be blues and then his white shirts, we're going to use his backgrounds for that. So I think it's going to be a gorgeous memory because he has about 40 ties and his one son actually worth works with him and wore suits and ties every day. And we thought that would be a good one to give her son too. So, um, you know, people are always asking like what to do for a tie quilt and that's just perfect. And then especially for a memory quilt. And this is one of my favorite at this series. So I asked her to send them. And see, this is just this little block and then she sewed them into basically a nine patch, but it's still using the same tool, just a smaller size. And you could make this block in any of the sizes that you, you know, we're making that you can do with the tool. And then see, she made a little bigger ones to do an accent to do the corners of the quilt. And this is just all scrappy. She loves to do scrappy quilts. She's got a stash that rivals mine. And then this is Nina's. So um, my daughter, is a long armor, so she quilted it for her, and um, it was at the house, but we didn't have a chance to bind it yet. So, uh, but this is see this part right here. Once again, is the block that that tool makes, and then we used uh, the folded corner cutter to cut these off because these are just rectangles with triangles on the end, and that's it. So it was very easy to put together, and this took about an afternoon, didn't it? It was yeah, it was it was really quick. And um, it's gorgeous. And then on the back to make it, see, then we did one of those big Kaufman metallics on the back because then it's kind of reversible. And I put Insulbrite in these a lot. And so with Insulbrite, it protects it. So you can put like casserole dishes on it and everything. Because I was finding at Thanksgiving and Christmas, we would have trivets and hot pads and everything else all down there. And so I just made one of these and put Insulbrite, which I'll show you in a minute, in the center so it protects your table from the heat. And by doing that, when I'm serving dinner, I flip this side up so they're not spilling gravy on the good side, okay? And, um, but it still looks beautiful if you put a pretty back on. And also when you're putting backs on your table runners, um, figure out what you're going to do for a binding because if your binding, for instance, in, in this one was green, then I could have put a Christmas back on there. So then it would be reversible and I could use it for both seasons, okay? So I usually splurge and do really pretty backs on my table runners so that I can switch them out. This is Insulbrite and um, you can buy it by the yard, but I don't know if you can see it on TV, but I think they can see it here. Uh, this is, it's got a metallic base to it. So you can see the silver because there's Teflon built into it. And so this stuff is great when you're doing placemats, table runners, or anything like that because then uh, they can put a hot dish on it and it's still going to protect your table. So I love putting this in my table runners. All right. How are we doing on time, Brian? 
Okay, five minutes? Okay. And uh, for all Creative Grids tools, we have, um, these are storyboards, but it kind of tells you step by step. And these illustrations were taken right from the instructions. So they come with written instructions that are really well done, and we also do videos that show you exactly how to use them. So this shows you, like for instance, that ruler I just showed you, exactly how it works. Okay, and on this one, um, I love to put the little cheaters on the ruler because I don't remember anything. And so this one literally is marked one, two, three, and four. You just rotate around the tool and finish the entire block. And then this is the little, this is how you do the straight out of line for that stocking. Because see, I can take my squares, cut them in half, and then cut them in half again. This is a right angle, so it's sewing together wonky four patches. And they're not going to match on the outside, and it doesn't matter because I'm just going to trim them down all to the same size. And none of those angles match anywhere. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything because nobody notices because they don't. the only thing that matches are the outside edges of the blocks, which are all cut to the same size. OK? So that is one of my absolute favorite tools. OK, now we're going to talk about their mask. And they are having, um, you know, you've heard of the ugly Christmas sweater contest? They're having an ugly mask contest. And this is the Creative Grids face mask. And so they're going to put details on the website very soon about how this is going to work, but there are prizes involved. And um, the uglier, the better. So, and I think, uh, Shayla, you said they don't have to mail in, they just have to mail in pictures for initially, and then they may have you send them in so they can display them and, and do it. Uh, but this is our face mask, and it has sold like crazy. Uh, it comes in three sizes. So there are lines here for small, medium, and large, so it'll work for all three sizes. Um, I wear a large because I have a big mouth and a big head. Um, the small worked for my grandchildren, OK? Uh, so you, know, you can just kind of play with it a little bit. But what I love about this, it is formed across here. And it also tells you if you want to put in a pleat so it closes it up you know, on the sides. They also. Um, recommend using a 28 millimeter cutter. If you want a 28 millimeter, they are sold out everywhere and they happen to have them here, so grab one. And the 28 millimeter is just makes it easier to cut this inside curve. I cut mine with a 45, but I did nick into the ruler a couple times. Um, but I was making, I ended up making over 200 of these. So, you know, if I did it a couple times, I was okay with that. But we've had many people say they prefer the 28. And honestly, I didn't have a 28, but I will when I leave Chipchuana. <laughs> yeah, so this is good for, the outside curve doesn't matter. The inside curve is where the 28 comes in handy. And they also have these, I think I can open this. Can I know the name of this pattern? Uh, it is, it's by Christine Van Busperk, and it's, um, um, do you remember the name of it? It's a cut loose press by Christine Van Buskirk, and we'll give them the number in a minute. Yeah, as soon as I get off, I can look it up. So I think it's on your list. I wonder, wait a minute, let's see if it's on here. Uh, yes, can you read that? Sure. <laughs> yeah, they printed that in like an eight font. My eyes don't do an eight font anymore. Oh, no, is it? I thought it says. Oh, they have the wrong number on here. We'll get it fixed. OK. And But for the face mask, see, look at these. These have the little bead at the end, so they're adjustable. And they come in a multitude of colors. And you know they have white, black, and now they have them in blue, red, purple, et cetera. But I like these because look how stretchy. And um, it's thinner, so these tend to um, hold your ear better. You can pull this out because this is one continuous piece because um, my 28-year-old <laughs> son, the first thing he came in and went and <laughs> took it right off and it's like, okay, you dummy. <laughs> Sometimes you can't fix stupid. And um, he just didn't see that. So, um, you know, it's not very easy to feed that back on. You just have to know that you're, you can pull it and adjust it. <laughs> yeah, Linda's laughing because she has boys too. And, you know, but boys, they just have to fiddle with everything. And um, so the very first thing he did is went in and just 
pulled him right off. And I don't think he stopped at one. I think he did more than one. So he didn't learn his lesson the first time. And But these come in packs. Just remember, you need two. You need one for each year. So, you know, um, I think this has 60 in it, and it does 30, is uh, 30 mass. And then they also have these. Uh, if you don't like something pulling on your ears, these are plastic that go around the back, and so you hook the elastic over um, these. Yeah, and she's looking at them, so show them. Yeah, so um, I like those better because I don't like the pulling on my ears, except then you have, you know, this band going across the back of your hair. And when you're videotaping, yeah. it doesn't look really well. Yep. Okay, so do we have time for me to show them one more thing? Maybe not. Yeah. Okay. And uh, this is a cut loose press pattern, and it's called Fashion Wine Tote. And what I love about it is you just cut an eight inch by 38 inch piece of backing, lining, and batting. And sew it together in a tube, and then it folds up long ways. But it has, I wasn't sure if any of you have used these grommets before, because they're very popular in a lot of purses and stuff. And this has a grommet to, um, on the front and back of it, so you can still open it. But it looks so pretty to run a ribbon through there to close it or put in a you know, bottle of wine. And I wanted to show you on these grommets, they come in packages like this and in all different sizes, and Dritz makes them. And uh, originally they were made for draperies, now everybody's using them for everything. So these happen to be the one in 9 16 which is what I use a lot for curtains. But they're using them in purses and all kinds of things now. And see, they come in two pieces, and this has the little pointy things, and this has the groove. And you just put them on a table, and they, pop together. Hear that pop? That's it. And they give you this little template in the package, and I think I dropped it out. It's just like home. I lost that little piece. But it's a template that you trace the circle that you need cut out for this inside right on the fabric. And then cut out that hole, snap this over top, and all the raw edges are within this, you know, this 3 8 inch rim. And then uh, these are plastic, so you don't really want to throw this in the washer because it would nick the paint. There's a little slit here. You just pop off, take a screwdriver, put it in there, pop them off, wash them, and then pop them right back on. They come in silver, gold, black, and gray. I mean, every color imaginable. Plus, they have them in check stripes and um, anything you could possibly want. Okay? So if, you, um, if there's anything that you're looking for and you want, you can go to checkerdistributor.com uh, and Checker is a wholesaler to Yoder's and Cotton Corner. They do not sell direct, but you can write down the item numbers because they have over 120,000 different products, I think, by now. And you can go on there and see, for instance, all of these. And you know it'll have the item number. And you can actually put it on a wish list and send it to them. And when you send it to them, they can order it for you and just call when your order's in. So. Um, when I started looking at it, for instance, I loved Kim Deal and I loved all her books and everything. It was nice to go back and I could see every book she ever wrote, just not the one that was currently in the store. And all of that stuff, you know, is usually still in print and it's still available. And so shop on there, write down your item numbers, call or fax it in or send them the wish list. And uh, the folks at Yoder's and Cotton Corner will be glad to get it for you. They do carry all Creative Grids rulers, so they carry all of that. They have the biggest selection of Cutler's Press, I think, anywhere. And, um, and they're glad to order it if they don't have it. So if you're looking for that, too, just call them or look on the website, and they've got everything. Okay? So thanks for coming, and um, I'll see you. Yeah, I'll see some of you tomorrow. Okay. So the people that are actually here, I'll put on.